place of being. Amen. You may be seated. Our lecture for this morning is Sadie Thompson.
I mean, who abides more truly and literally than someone than a baby abides in a womb that carries and nurtures it for nine months? Abide in me, Jesus says, and I think like a baby abides in its mother, so we are to abide in this love of Jesus. And of course, we know that mothering is not and cannot be limited to a biological function. It is not limited and cannot be limited to that as well. As well. There are many who mother us who have never carried a child in their womb. And there are many a mother who were never birth mothers or adoptive mothers, but they were ones who mothered many of the children around them. I can think of countless women and men that I could easily place in this category, and I'm sure that you can too. But this morning we're going to learn about this resurrection life through some reflections from those who have been called by God to, to be a mother. And so first we're going to invite Deb Reber to come forward. She's going to offer us a reflection on motherhood. Deb is the mother of two, uh, Leah and um, Brett, and Brett is uh, soon to be, will soon be married this summer, and uh, Deb is a grandmother, not only a mother, but I said you're too young to be a grandmother in the first service, you're still too young to be a grandmother, you guys, but she's a grandmother of uh, a two also, a three-year-old and a one-year-old, Lydia and Sophia, so thank you. So, so thank you, all right, thank you for correcting me, thank you for being here, we appreciate it. Our mothers have uh, been speaking at both services. Happy Mother's Day to one and all. Yes, I am a mother and a grandmother, and I, I am very proud of this title. And everyone who emulates those qualities is with that selfless love that moms give, that gives me the knowledge that God is in charge, and especially created these individuals to be the tender, life-giving disciplinarians that we are. Where would we be without them? Those caring moms and teachers that supply us with most of the information instinct does not supply. Here are some examples of those well-known words of wisdom. Look both ways before you cross the road. Wash your hands. Brush your teeth. Don't talk back. Elbows off the table. Don't talk with your mouth full. Never run with scissors. Stand up straight. Don't slouch. Eat your vegetables. Speak up. Don't play with your food. Be home early. Work before play. Don't forget your coat, just to name a few. Of course, I am not talking only about those moms that have given birth to their children. But those wise women who have mothered many a child, an adult, that need a loving and caring hand. My mom, Rosella Della Schneider Lee, gave me a love of people, food, and a giving nature. But it was my mother-in-law who patiently taught me to can vegetables, and freeze, make bread, follow a recipe, and how to make do with what you have, and not what you want. I don't know where I would have been had she not adopted my husband many years ago and brought him up to be the man he is today. Adoption and fostering is the greatest example of loving others as God loves us. I also want to include those teachers, nurses, and caring professions that do more than earn a paycheck but choose to give the loving attention to some of God's children that most. They don't do this because of obligation, but because they love God and want to do His will. Abraham Lincoln once said, All that I am, I owe to my angel mother. George Washington said, My mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. All I am, I owe to my mother. I attribute all my success in life to the moral, intellectual, physical education I 
daughters as he wants me to. I pray for constant patience as any mother of a two-year-old would. I pray that the love of the Lord will shine through me and shape who my children will be. And my greatest prayer is that my girls will learn to love the Lord and be surrounded by people who God has. So they want to be 
feel part of themselves in their home. That's why they bring their dirty laundry home all the time. And then, actually, it feels kind of good. You still have the cars in there, right? You cook and you bake them. Send so special things back for them because of course they can start them. And then they're gone to college for, for a while. And they start saying some really nice things to you and send you special notes and things. So in just a very short time, somehow I finally got to find smart. And then they're growing and changing constantly again and they make decisions. And you know enough to keep quiet sometimes because I think to myself, ooh, I wouldn't have done it that way. But you realize that. This person that you brought into the world is a gift from God, and he or she is a separate entity from you. They're their own person, growing up and away, deciding on their own life's path. And many, many times you look at them and they're surprised and happy at the jobs they have and the persons they have become. And then your children make your grandparents, which is possible. Being a grandparent just brings you fully alive again, like re-watching your kids, old kids growing up. And then you watch your children being parents, and you are very proud of them. Then time goes on, and we have some health issues, and the tables are turned. They are taking care of us very humbly. But we are thankful. Life is full of surprises, and life is good. Looking back just a bit, when my own mother died, it was tough. I'll tell you this little scenario. There's a fine line between laughing and crying, but they both release emotions. And when we cried enough, we were outside of the funeral home after mom was waiting. I should remember this cartoon character, Whitney. Um, he was a chubby little guy. And his saying was, that big Tuesday for a today. Well, my younger brother said to the rest of us, he said, like, I gladly think Tuesday for a cigarette today. But I was born dead. And then he announced to us, he wakened us to the fact that you realize we're all Christ now, and we're way too old for anybody to want to announce us. So throughout life, I have found people to fill the roles of the people I've lost. A mother figure I can confide in that loves me on back, and special aunts and sisters that belong to me. One last thought. Ronnie's mother never drove a car. She depended on all of us. And if you're ever waiting for someone to pick you up, you've been in that situation. You don't know exactly when you're coming, so your cool boots on for 15 to 20 minutes. And she's very patient busy and you picked her up, you dropped her off at the grocery store. Some time had passed and Carol had run to the store called and said, Ronnie, this is Karen, did you forget him? And he said, no, I don't like him, mother. <laughs> so all of us are someone's child, whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So the lesson for all of us is today, don't forget. Thank you. 
defines parenting as the raising of a child by its parents, the act or process of becoming a parent, or taking care of someone in the manner of a parent. Motherhood, defined by Webster's Dictionary, is a female parent, maternal tenderness and affection, or to give birth and to raise. Do these definitions from Webster do justice for what a mother really is? This is a letter that I wrote to my children, Morgan, Gavin, and Madeline. When I first thought of being a parent, I didn't know what it would be like. People tried to tell me what, what to expect, but I couldn't begin to understand what it would feel like to have this much love for another human. My love is like a burning feeling in my heart, and it continues to burn whether you're with me or away from me. That burning feeling grows with each achievement and milestone that you reach. You are now a sassy seven-year-old, a busy three-and-a-half-year-old that's licking the pew right now, <laughs> and an uncontrollably independent 22-month-old. And we don't know what God has in store for the rest of our life, but we know that we haven't reached all of our achievements and milestones together yet. My heart has grown larger with each of your three births, each of your first cries, each of you being placed in my arms for the first time, three holy baptisms where you became God's children, many nursing sessions, three first times walking, three first words, so far two potty trainings, two first days of preschool, one first bike ride with no training wheels, three dance recitals, one youth wrestling tournament, one first book being read to me all by yourself with no help, and many 100% spelling tests. I feel like with all of these achievements and milestones that you have reached with me by your sides, my heart should be as big as our sanctuary. I can't imagine how it will feel by the time that you are grown adults and you are watching your own children reach these very same milestones that I am blessed to be able to watch you reach. One thing Webster's Dictionary forgot to define when defining parenting and motherhood is that it's not always rainbows and butterflies. There are days when I want to take a nap or lock myself in my bedroom for a while or just walk away, alone. There are days that after I put you to bed, I sit down in the recliner in the quiet and think about how our day together was, about how crabby I was to you, or how tired I was, or about how many times I said no instead of saying yes. Then I get out of the recliner, walk to each one of your bedrooms and kiss your sweet, innocent, sleeping head. With tears in my eyes, I quietly apologize for the way that our day ended. I say that tomorrow is another day and we will get to start all over again. And most importantly, I end it with a love. These are the days that I hope we can all forget. They will fade these old memories will fade, and one day I'll look back and I'll think, how did I do it? It is even harder for me to understand that on days like this, my heart grows for all of you. My heart grows in unpleasant times too, such as skinned knees, the occasional falls, strep throat, ear infections, vaccines, bee stings, and the new puppy Marley bites. I hope that you will never forget that I am and always will be there to comfort you in time of tears, sadness, and hurt feelings. Parenting is not always easy. On my stressful days, I need to take time to remind myself that this is what is most important in my life. This is what my life is, and it's wonderful. I pray that you will all continue to grow in faith. I pray that you will continue to read God's word. I pray that you will teach these habits to your own children one day. And I promise to continue to raise you with these very important fundamentals to live by that my parents taught me.
fear, pray. When in time of darkness, pray. When in time of sorrow, pray. When in time of question, pray. When in time of thankfulness and joy, pray. And remember to thank our Heavenly Father for all that He has provided us with. Because praying is the very most important. Morgan Leanne, nothing makes mommy happier than when I walk into your bedroom at night and I hear you praying out loud to our Heavenly Father. Gavin Patrick, nothing makes mommy happier than when you remind our family that we need to pray before we eat every meal, even on the busiest and most chaotic nights. And Madeline Leanne, nothing makes mommy happier than when I see your tiny hands folded as we pray as a family, and having you join in at the end of our prayer with an enthusiastic amen. These are some things that you have helped me learn by being your parent. Number one, I have always been a worrier and a planner. Your daddy has told me that I worry about things that I should be worried about next. Once I became your mom, I worry about way more, and I plan for way less. Number two, things don't always happen as, as quickly or efficiently or cleanly as they used to. I could make cookies quicker without the mess if I did it alone during that time, but we have many wonderful memories baking together. And number three, none of us know what tomorrow will bring. Being your mother is like having three pieces of my very own body out in this world that I can't always keep safe. But I have faith in our Father above that he will watch over you every step of the way. I thank God every day for all of you. Today I especially thank God for giving me the opportunity to celebrate Mother's Day as your mother. To my precious children, Remember this today, tomorrow, and forever. I will always pray for you. I will always be there for you to fall back on. And I will always love you. Love, Mom.